7 every morning, but we're driving to the temple today, so it's 8, but it's a little after 8. Okay, so um, we've, been, we've been going through the scriptures that refer to Jesus Christ. And so there's many. I will reiterate some of the ones that I've already done. This is uh, Jesus Christ Advocate, Jesus Christ the Anointed, Jesus Christ Antimortal, Existence of, Appearances, Antimortal, Appearances, Postmortal, Ascension of, Atonement through, Authority of, Baptism of, Betrayal of, Birth of, Condescension of, Creator, Crucifixion of, Davidic Descent of, Death of, Deliverer, Divine Sonship, Exemplar, Family of, Firstborn, Ordained, Glory of, Good Shepherd. So that's, this, we'd, we've been working on Good Shepherd for the last few days. Um, so the next one in line is Jesus Christ, Head of the Church. Okay, so the first scripture um, that we're going to look at is Matthew 16, 18. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Okay, Matthew 16, 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the next one, oh, the rest of them are in um, the new scriptures. So there's in 3 Nephi 18, 16. And as I have prayed among you, even so ye shall, shall ye pray in my church, among my people who do repent and are baptized in my name. Behold, I am the light. I have set an example for you. I didn't really get that one too much. Okay, gave him to be the head over all things to the church. That's Ephesians 1.22. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head of all head over all things to the church. And Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You know, when I'm reading these with the app, I'm I'm touching them and it's giving me that verse, but only that verse. But when I do it with the, the paper scriptures, I read what's ahead and, and after it, which is which really is good. Let me see if I can have it do that to me. Gave him to be the head over all things of the church. But let me go back I'll go to 3rd Nephi 21 22 but if they will repent and hearken unto my words and harden not their hearts I will establish my church among them and they shall come in unto the covenant and be numbered among this the remnant of Jacob unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance so I guess the head of the church it's when he says my church my church meaning that he's it's his church and he's the head of it okay so that makes sense but if they will repent and hearken unto my words and harden not their hearts I will establish my church among them and they shall come in unto the covenant and be numbered among the remnant of Jacob unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance so this is um, you know, Jacob is the father of the house of Israel, of all the 12 sons. And the people on this continent where this was being given, they they were the ones that were descended of the house of Joseph, which is one of the sons of Jacob. And, um, you know, the, the Abrahamic covenant. But if they will repent and hearken unto my words and harden not their hearts, I will establish my church among them. So, before he establishes his church, people, if they will repent and hearken unto my words and harden out their hearts, I will establish my church among them. You know, 
he doesn't just establish his church anywhere, right? It's where people have not hardened their hearts and they repent. And they shall come in unto the covenant. So this is the, the church, his church, the purpose of his church. And they shall come in unto the covenant and be numbered among this, the remnant of Jacob, unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance. So this land for their inheritance, many times in the scriptures, the Lord has said um, in the Book of Mormon, which was to the residents of this continent, he told them that as long as Okay, so he gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Let's look at that one a little more closely. And he hath put all things under his feet. See, if this were in the paper, I would look back and see what's before it and what's after it. It doesn't have that. Or at least I don't know how to get it. Oh, yeah, I just tap that place and then it'll go. Okay. okay. So, the he here is God the Father, right? Let's see what it says. Paul saying, Grace be to you. Blessed be the God and Father, according as he hath chosen him, chosen us in him. Oh, isn't this interesting? So, this is where Paul is saying, about foreordination that we're chosen before before we come here he says blessed no he says oh, blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love so these this is a this is interesting scripture because it's kind of evidence that we existed before we were born and that we were chosen before the foundation of the world that's it's kind of interesting isn't it a lot of people think that we don't exist until we're born but we do okay now where were we we were having predestined us unto adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will he says many times that we are his children if we follow him um, in him in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace was wrong with that one and so there's not a lot of unity between the different churches but one day we will all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God isn't that cool the day will come that every knee will bow and every man confess that Jesus is the Christ everybody everybody from every religion from all walks of life that's a lot of different belief systems that are they're going to, people are going to put aside. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. All of us in the unity of the faith. That's interesting. It keeps cutting out. Hi, Linda. How are you? Nice to see you. Okay. So, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's interesting, you know, the, the, the disunity amongst the churches. You know, henceforth be no more children tossed and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. I mean, every church has a different doctrine, doesn't it? And so, depending on what church we go to, we believe a different doctrine. But there will be one day that that won't be happening. We henceforth be no more children. You know, that's a cool thing. 
by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay in wait to deceive. You know, there are many places in the scriptures where things really don't make sense. There's a lot of things that have been changed over the years. And there's a lot of missing scriptures. You know, they'll refer to some other scripture that we don't have. Look at these colors. Autumn is such a beautiful time to be alive. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, so the next verse is, But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things. Grow up unto him. Grow up unto him. So unto him we grow up. I guess that's the only way I can make sense of it. Otherwise, it doesn't sound right. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. Ah, we grow up into him so that we become more like him. We, come, we merge into him, as it were, with our development. That we may, gr may grow up into him in all things, which is the head even Christ. So it said the first part of that was but speaking the truth in love. So if we go back up here till till we come in, to, we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Wow that's cool eh? For us to grow up to be have the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's pretty cool that we henceforth be no more children to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay in wait to leave but speaking the truth in love that we may grow up unto him in all things which is the head even Christ so speaking the truth of, in love so this unity of the faith the un so this is talking about the unity of the faith and then the, the differences in the different religions and some are full of crap and you know not all of course but some are some have cunning craftiness whereby they lay in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love so when you speak your truth you have to speak it in love right otherwise we cause contention and disunity does that all make sense does that make sense Willem uh, yeah, speaking the truth, yeah, yeah. So you declare the gospel uh, in a loving way rather than in a contentious way. Yeah, that's a perfect sense. So, so it's important that when we go on um, chat groups where people that are not of our faith are there, they, that we don't belittle them because we think we, you know, we know what they believe when we, you know, whatever. We don't know everything everybody else believes, but... It's important that if you stead on doctrine, uh, not, instead of focusing on our differences, pointing out, well, your church believes this, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Instead of focusing on our differences, if we focus on what we have, our similarities, what you have in common, you know, and, and that's, a, that's kind of a, a good thing in general with everybody. We have, we're, we're all different from everybody. And we all imagine that we aren't going to fit and, you know, that we aren't pretty enough or that we don't dress well enough or whatever the thing is that hangs us up. But we're all the same in many regards. And so look, look for the similarities. You know, we all have parents. We may have children. We have, may have grandchildren. Frankly, you know. So it's important that we focus on our similarities and not on our differences. And think for a moment about politics and the division that's gone on now. There seems to be two camps. And if you think about instead of them being the enemy, think of them as being, they want good stuff. I think in the end, everybody wants democracy. Everybody wants 
good things for their families. And, and the way that they think about achieving that are different. But we need to look at our, our similarities because this division is not filling us with love. And the Savior wants us to have a unity in the faith with everyone, not just with those of our, our religion, our church. <coughs> and we should focus on good things about the people and, and get our minds out of politics of us versus them or whatever. It's okay to know things. It's okay to, to know what's going on. But you've got to be careful now because there's a lot of there's a lot of ability for the emotions to get stirred up and to start imagining things about the other side. You don't exactly know. Like the, the, the things that are being told are always being filtered through a person. And all people have an opinion and have a feeling. And so it's very easy to get emotionally charged up by stuff, especially because those kind of programs and, and discussions attract us. Well, like we are attracted to watching violence on television, right? It's natural. You know, something goes wrong and we all look. Those things get our attention. What? There's a disaster coming? There's a disaster again? Where? I want to know. I want to know. And so we get ourselves all riled up with these things. But if we let the Spirit lead us, let the Savior lead us, it's peace there. It's peace and it's love and it's acceptance and embracing other people and not making assumptions. Somebody on my channel that was a good, a good friend, a follower, whatever, she and I always got along well and then one day she told me that I was a communist and she was going to get off my channel. Capitalism so much, but I'm a communist. Forget that. <clears throat> anyway, but so she had decided what I was because of what someone else told about other people. And anyway, so we have to be careful that we don't that we have unity, that we don't separate ourselves from other people and assume that we know what they are thinking or feeling or believing or worshiping. <laughs> it's very important to the Lord. This, these contention is me, saith the Lord. He does not want us to fight and to find fault. We're not to judge others. We're not to find fault. We're to speak kind things. We're to look for the good. You know, this isn't a commandment when he's, it is a commandment when he said, whatsoever is untrue, based, benevolent, virtuous, lovely or of good report. So a good report means things that are being said about things. Good report, not bad report. Think ye on these things. So that's a commandment. It's not a good suggestion that we have a positive view. But we're commanded to do that. These are important things. Did you have any thoughts on this topic that I'm I don't know for the last little bit of it. Okay, our internet service was gone. So we're going to go back to the next one is Colossians 1.18. We're talking about Jesus Christ, head of the church. Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So that's Jesus Christ, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have preeminence. Yeah, so Colossians, this was written after he was resurrected, after he had been crucified and was resurrected. And so it says, the firstborn from the dead. The resurrection is a pretty cool thing, you know. 
Like, did you do you realize that when I'm going to show you these trees, that when the um, when the Savior was resurrected, all those is it all though everybody you know who was resurrected when he was resurrected was it Willem? Uh, I think everybody uh, who uh, married at least uh, the celestial kingdom. So celestial to the terrestrial kingdom. Right? All, all so the righteous were yeah, basically all the righteous. The were righteous were resurrected. Yeah. Oh, there's no audio still. Oh, well that was before I had it muted. But how is it now? Still no audio. Let's see if it's. Hmm. No audio. Okay. Well, what shall I do? I guess I should turn it off and on. Hi, Uma. Is it working now? Yes or no, and I will turn it off if it's not working. Oh good, it's back. Oh good, that's good. Then I'll stay here. Okay, so we are um, we're reading in Colossians. We were reading all the references from the topical guide under Jesus Christ, head of the church. There's a whole list of different subjects, Jesus Christ, comma, whatever. But so this is head of the church, and so. Um, <coughs> And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first four. This internet just keeps going out. Um, being first in all things, even in the resurrection, he was resurrected. And then all those that died before him that were righteous were resurrected. It's like the morning of the first resurrection. At the beginning of the resurrection, isn't that interesting how this light is making these lines across everything? Huh. Oh well, I'm right next to the sun. That's all that we can say about it. Yes, Jesus is my savior too, Regina. Uh, anyway, so he was resurrected first and then everybody else was resurrected after him. So once again, he's the first. Anyway, that he might have preeminence. I think I was about to say something else, but I forget what it was. Which is typical. Okay. Um, and then in Mosiah, he had established his church in the in the new world as well as in the old world. So um, Mosiah twenty six twenty two. For behold, this is my church. Whoever is baptized shall be baptized unto repentance, and whomsoever ye receive shall believe in my name, and him will I freely forgive. So let's look at what's around that. Mosiah 26. Such beautiful stuff. I think I would just want to read it all. But King Mosiah said unto Alma, Behold, I judge them not, therefore I deliver them into thy hands to be judged. So Alma was a. No. Mosiah delivered them to Alma's hands to be judged. And now the spirit of Alma was troubled again, and he went and inquired of the Lord what he should do concerning this matter, for he for feared that he should do something wrong, do wrong in the sight of God. Wouldn't it be nice if we were all that way? And it came to pass that after he had poured out his whole soul to God, 
the voice of the Lord came unto, came to him, saying, Blessed art thou, Alma, and blessed are they who were baptized in the waters of Mormon. Thou art blessed because of thy exceeding faith in the words alone of my servant Abinadi. And blessed are they because of their exceeding faith in the words alone which thou hast spoken unto them. And blessed art thou because thou hast established a church among this people, and they shall be established, and they shall be my people. Yea, blessed is this people who are willing to bear my name, for in my name shall they be called, and they are mine. And because thou hast inquired of me concerning the transgressor, thou art blessed. Thou art my servant, and I covenant with thee that thou shalt have eternal life, and thou shalt serve me, and go forth in my name, and shall gather together my sheep. And he that will hear my voice shall be my sheep, and him shall ye receive into the church, and him will I also receive. For behold, this is my church. Whosoever is baptized shall be baptized unto repentance, and whomsoever ye receive shall believe in my name, and him will I freely forgive. For it is I that taketh upon me the sins of the world, for it is I that hath created them, and it is I that granteth unto them that believeth unto the end of place at my right hand. For behold, in my name are they called, and if they know me, they shall come forth and shall have a place eternally at my right hand. And it shall come to pass that when the second trump shall sound, then shall they that never knew me come forth and shall stand before me. And then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, that I am their Redeemer, but they would not be redeemed. And then I will confess unto them that I never knew them, and they shall depart into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. You know, I think the everlasting fire is within ourselves. You know, sometimes when we I don't, I don't know that it's a, an actual fire we would be cast into, but rather the fire of knowing what we could have had, but not having done what was required, and how that will eat at us so badly, it will be like an everlasting. I know how bad I feel when I do something wrong. I really feel so terrible. And, and finally when it occurs to me to repent for it or I let go of it then finally that that horrible feeling is gone and it is like an unquenchable fire until I repent but I think this is something much bigger you know than just once when I don't repent maybe it's no if I never repented at all and knew but you have to really know that you're repent not repenting on purpose it's not, it's not where not having heard it, not knowing what was right or wrong. It's like, a, oh, really? I didn't know that, right? Like then you're not responsible for the things that you don't do if you don't know. But once you do know, then you are responsible. And that's, you know, our parents teach us when we're young. And so we do know good from evil and bad, good from bad and right from wrong. But there are places where the traditions of the fathers are so bad that they just grow up believing in the traditions of the fathers. But at some point, um, well, not every not every person on the planet hears of the gospel. They don't all hear it. There are many people in many places that will never hear the name Jesus Christ in any language. So they won't know. Your stage four breast cancer, oh my gosh. I love you, Regina. I'm sorry you have stage four breast cancer. Do you think we'll still have time to meet each other? I hope they can, they can take care of it. We have such good medical stuff nowadays. Whether it's traditional medicine or an alternative medicine or um, the real medical system you know we have really good good things that can help us 
And, it, and like everything else, everything is getting better all the time. We get a newer, better equipment, different way to deal with things, you know, instead of the way they would do surgery, big long cuts. Now they can do little tiny cuts. Everything has changed and everything is so much better. It's always getting better. Okay. And I will confess unto them that I never knew them. Now I think that <coughs> you're welcome, Regina. I'm I'm um then will I confess that I unto them that I never knew them. Let's go back and see who he's talking about. And it shall come to pass that when the second trump shall sound. Okay, so the first trump is the morning of the first res resurrection. Oh, your chem chemo, that should do it, right? Chemo kills, kills breast cancer. You also lose your hair and all that stuff and feel sick as a dog. But when that's over, you have hope, right? That will end. That's why I'm off so much. Oh, oh, that's why you're not on it, because you're, oh, you're so sick. Oh my gosh, Regina. Well, 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 I guess, I guess we all go through things, and if we knew what each other go through, we would all say, oh my gosh, really? Oh, that's so terrible. But we don't all go through them at the same time. So, hey, look, this is called Alan. I think that has to do with, we're reading and reading about Alma right now. Are these things coincidences? <coughs> I'm glad it helps. Are these things coincidences when we um, when we drive by something that we're reading about at the moment? It's like a two witnesses, right? Everything there'll be two witnesses to establish the truth. Okay, so we'll go back to this beginning of this, and when the second and when it shall come. So first he's talking about his church and all these people that are willing to hear him and and thou art my servant and I covenant with thee that thou shalt have eternal life and thou shalt serve me and go forth in my name and shall gather together my sheep. So <coughs> we make covenants in the church we covenant when we're baptized to serve him and to take upon us the burdens of other people and mourn with those that mourn and comfort those that stand in need of comfort. Whew. That was you got a good windshield there. Didn't crack. What was it? It was a stone. A little pebble. It was about a, a, a three quarters of an inch. Glad you're listening. So thou art my servant, and I covenant with thee that thou shalt have eternal life, and thou shalt serve and go forth in my name, and shall gather together my sheep. So the covenant is not just that he will have eternal life, but it's also contingent upon, and thou shalt serve me, and go forth in my name, and shall gather together my sheep. So we do have to serve him. And he that will hear my voice shall be my sheep. And him shall ye receive into the church, and him will I also receive. For behold, this is my church. Whoever is baptized shall be baptized unto repentance. And whomsoever ye receive shall believe in my name, and him will I freely forgive. For it is I that taketh upon me the sins of the world, for it is I that hath created them. And it is I that granteth unto him that believeth unto the end a place at my right hand. So if you believe in him and serve him until the end of your life, you will have a place at his right hand. And, <clears throat> and these are not works, you know, you're not like doing good works so that you can go to heaven. It's, um, it's by the grace of God, but he gives us commandments. And when we come unto him and give ourselves to him, he then prompts us and he becomes our leader and our teacher and 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 so we 
we need to follow him. We need to listen to him, what he's telling us. We don't just get to ignore him after that. Like, that's fine. You're saved. You're done. Now you can ignore him, and it's just done. It's like, well, check that off. But because you're you're serving him, then you, you have to listen to what he's telling you, and he prompts you, and he gives you stuff. But there's always forgiveness when we don't. But we do need to repent. And so then the second trump will come to pass. So the first trump is the the morning of the first resurrection. And so the second trump shall sound. So in the morning of the first resurrection would come forth the most righteous, those that are the most like Christ or whatever. And so then after that becomes the comes those that have are less and then less and less until the second trump sounds. And now that's when not those that believe in Christ at all. But the second trump, when it sounds, it will be, Then shall they that never knew me come forth, and shall stand before me. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, and am their Redeemer. But they would not. So this is not those that just didn't know about him. But this is those that would not. They would not be redeemed. Then shall they that never knew me. Like they didn't really get to know him, right? They never bothered to get to know him. They never knew him. Even though they had the opportunity. When they had the opportunity. And shall stand before me. <clears throat> and then they shall know that I am the Lord their Redeemer. I think at this point everybody that comes and stands before him will know that he is the Lord their Redeemer. There won't be any questions. We'll know. We'll remember. We'll, we'll know him from before. <clears throat> but they would not be redeemed. That's the big deal. They would not repent. And they would not forsake their sins. They would not, <coughs> they would not come to him. It's different than if you try and you keep falling down and have to keep repenting. That's a whole different ballgame. When we are, because that all revolves around him. And, and we see, we know him. We know what he stands for, what, he's, what he tell, teaches us, you know. And we know him personally. We know what, the way he communicates with us personally. We know if he gives us pictures or if he gives us sounds, words in our voice, or if we hear words in another voice. But he, he has a specific way of communicating with everybody. But those that will not hear him, it's not the minister that they won't hear, it's the Savior who's speaking to us inside. And, they that, and then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, that I am their Redeemer. But they would not be redeemed. And then will I confess unto them that I never knew them. So I think if you think about that, that I would not be redeemed. That I refuse to know him and get to know him and I would not be redeemed. Then... And then knowing that he is the Savior and my elder brother and, and my hope, my only hope of getting to come back and live with God. There's an accident here. In the Joseph Smith translation, it says that we never, they never knew him. He always knows us, but it's, they didn't know him. Oh, so the part where it says, and I never knew them? Yeah. Yeah, that does sound a little strange. And I immediately thought, well, he knows but us all. In Joseph Smith's translation, it says, they never knew me. They never knew me. See, that's where one, there's some of these little things that were off. Um, Joseph Smith had the gift of translation. Like, he was translated the Book of Mormon from ancient hieroglyphics. And so he also translated some of the Bible. I think he just, just a couple of verses. Well, oh, but this isn't this isn't the one in the Bible. This is in Mosiah. 
and they shall depart into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Therefore I say unto you, that he that will not hear my voice, the same ye shall not receive into my, into my church. For him I will not receive at the last day. Therefore I say unto you, Go, and whosoever transgresses against me, him shall ye judge according to the sins which he has committed. And if he confesses sins before thee and me, and repenteth in the sincerity of his heart, him shall ye forgive, and I for will forgive him also. Yea, as often as my people repent, will I forgive them their trespasses against me. And ye shall also forgive one another your trespasses. For verily I say unto you, he, he that forgiveth not his neighbor's trespasses, when he says that he repents, the same hath brought himself under condemnation. Now I say unto you, Go, and whosoever will not repent of his sins, the same shall not be numbered among my people, and this shall be observed from this time forward. And it came to pass, when Alma had heard these words, he wrote them down, that he might have them, that he might judge the people of the church according to the commandments of God. And it came to pass that Alma went and judged those that had been taken in iniquity according to the word of the o Lord. And whosoever repented of their sins and did confess them, them he did number among the people of the church. And those that would not confess their sins and repent of their iniquities, the same were not numbered among the people of my church, and their names were blotted out. So they were excommunicated. And it came to pass that Alma did regulate all the affairs of the church, and they began again to have peace and prosperity exceedingly in the affairs of the church, walking circumspectly before God, receiving many and baptizing many. And now all these things did Alma and his fellow laborers do who were over the church, walking in all diligence, teaching the word of God in all things, suffering all manner of afflictions, being persecuted by those that did not belong to the church. And they did admonish their brethren, and they were also admonished, every one by the word of God, according to his sins, or to the sins which he had committed, being commanded of God to pray without ceasing and to give thanks in all things. Wow, that was really nice, wasn't it? I liked reading that. I remember when I was reading the Book of Mormon and they would talk about the church and people being numbered among the church and people joining the church and they would teach the gospel to people and they would join the church and and the unity within the church and it just sounded like such a wonderful place. You know, I, I almost wanted to live in that day, you know, when when the church I mean he was Alma was the chief judge. But he was also a prophet. And so how did that work? Was he judging like the, the people in the whole land? Or just the people in the church, Willem? Uh, Alma, uh, uh, when he first started out, he was a judge of the land and he was also a leader of the church. And then later on, he uh, delivered a judgment seat to somebody, to Nephi, so that he could concentrate fully on the church. And the judgment seat was for over how? Over all the land? Is that what you said? It was over the land, yeah, for the civil, okay. the civil, you know, like the, the non-church stuff, right? And so, and so, then most of the, I mean, if your if your judge is judging by the rules that Jesus Christ is giving him over the land, I mean, it's it's something good about the land, isn't it? It's, I mean, that land is pretty good place. What? For instance, if President Nelson was also the, uh, the president of DOJ, for instance, uh, that would be comparable to what Alma has, or the president of the United States. Uh, oh, not the president, because the judicial is different than the executive. Well, yeah. So but, the judicial, uh, it's like you said before, he would be the, yeah, the over the. Yeah, the analogy is not it's not total because. I think I think it's good though. He would yeah. he would be the the highest ranking in the judiciary yeah. Yeah. arm of the government. Interesting. So it must be a pretty righteous group of people to have a, you know, the judge being based on Jesus Christ and the church.
anyway, so that was Mosiah. So how are we doing for time? The Church of Christ, who was the author? Let's do Moroni 6.4. Oh no, we'll do this one. Um, Mosiah 27.13. Okay, so now this is about Alma's kids. Um, your kids don't always do what you teach them. Have you noticed that? And it came to pass that the persecutions which were inflicted on the church by the unbelievers became so great that the church began to murmur and complain to their leaders concerning the matter. And they did complain to Alma, and Alma laid the case before their king, Mosiah. And Mosiah consulted with his priests. And it came to pass that King Mosiah sent a proclamation throughout the land round about that there should not any unbeliever persecute any of those who belong to the church of God. Isn't that a cool society? And there was a strict command throughout all the churches that there should be no persecutions among them that there should be an equality among all men, that they should let no pride or haughtiness disturb their peace, that every man should esteem his neighbor as himself, laboring with their own hands for their support. Yea, and all their priests and teachers should labor with their own hands for their support. In all cases, save it were in sickness or in much want, <clears throat> and doing these things they did abound in the grace of God. And there began to be much peace again in the land, and the people began to be very numerous, and began to scatter abroad upon the face of the earth, yea, on the north and on the south, on the east and on the west, building large cities and villages in all quarters of the land. If you want to read along, this is, if you download the Gospel Library app, then it, we're in Mosiah chapter 27, verse 6. Um, seven and the lord did visit them and prosper them and they became a large and wealthy people now the sons of mosiah were numbered among the unbelievers and also one of these sons of alma was numbered among them he being called alma after his father so here we've got alma who is the chief judge and who is a very righteous man and 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 a leader in the church and so his kids were now the sons of Mosiah were unbelievers and also one of the sons of Alma was numbered among them he being called Alma after his father so there you there you have it like talk about um, a scandal right like in in the government when you have a judge a very important judge and his son is doing all sorts of horrible stuff. It reflects badly on the father, right? So now the sons of, but it's not the father doing it, right? Now the sons of Mosiah were numbered among the unbelievers and also one of the sons of Alma numbered among them. He being called Alma after his father. Nevertheless, he became a very wicked and an adulterous man. And he was a man of many words. And he did speak much flattery to the people. He sounds like a politician. Therefore he led many of the people to do after the manner of his iniquities. And he became a great hinderment to the prosperity of the church of God, stealing away the hearts of the people, causing much dissension among the people, giving a chance for the enemy of God to exercise his power over them. See, whenever there's contention, then Satan, Satan loves it. And now it came to pass that while he was going about to destroy the church of God, for he did go about secretly with the sons of Mosiah, seeking to destroy the church. So Mosiah is the king, right? And the prophet. And Alma is also a prophet and the judge. And you got their kids together. Going about secretly seeking to destroy the church and to lead astray the people of the Lord, contrary to the commandments of God or even the king. Remember the commandment that nobody was supposed to go around persecuting members of the church. Or what were the other things he said? I forget. Do you remember the other things he said they weren't supposed to do? 
be asking me. Yeah. I, for, I uh, wasn't paying attention for a moment. Okay. You're allowed to not pay attention for just a moment. Okay. And as I said unto you, as they were going about rebelling against God, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto them. Would that that would happen all the time. So an angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and he descended as it were in a cloud, and he spake as it were with a voice of thunder, which caused the earth to shake upon which they stood. And so great was their astonishment that they fell to the earth and understood not the words which he spake unto them. Nevertheless, he cried again, saying, Alma, arise and stand forth, for why persecutest thou the church of God? For the Lord hath said, This is my church, and I will establish it. And nothing shall overthrow it, save it is the transgression of my people. And again the angel said, Behold, the Lord hath heard the prayers of his people, and also the prayers of his servant Alma, who is thy father. For he has prayed with much faith concerning thee, that thou mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. So he didn't pray that, you know, something bad would happen to the persecutors he prayed that they would be brought to the knowledge of the truth he and all the people of the church seem to be praying together Alma who is thy father for he has prayed with much faith, faith concerning thee that thou mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth so if there's you're having a problem with somebody pray that they might be brought to the knowledge of the truth therefore i mean if they're having if they're persecuting you because of your faith or because they're in a different church and you don't like the doctrine that they're talking about then pray for them that they might be brought to the a knowledge of the truth you know this lady instead of calling me a communist you know, she could have prayed that I would be brought to a knowledge of the truth, right? Then she wouldn't be so involved in disliking me and assuming of what I am believing. Instead, when you pray for somebody else, you look at them differently. You see them more like God sees them. And, you know, you're hoping, you're praying that he will bless them. That's a whole different place in your heart, wanting somebody to be blessed than to be upset with them. Now, you don't have to put yourself in harm's way, right? Don't put yourself in harm's way. Don't stay in harm's way because you're forgiving the perpetrator of the harm. You need to save yourself from abuse and you need to save your, your children from abuse. And it may be very hard and financially, it may look like suicide to leave. But you must be you must be careful not to not to let anybody take away your free agency and your freedom to study the scriptures. You have to be very careful. But all in the Lord's time. The Lord will prompt you on how to do that and when to do that. And there's a time for everything. For some, it's immediate danger, and for others, it's it's not as immediate. Anyway, um, for he has prayed with much faith concerning thee that thou mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. So here, you imagine. I mean, he's with these these other kids, and they're all going about doing everything they can figure out to do to destroy the church. And um, you know, like even bearing false witness. I mean, who's to say what they've done and what? How would they fight against the church? Well, they would probably try to slander people that are in the church, right? The good people. They would try and you know that the king is off actually a horrible person, and I know personally that this is a thing he did. You know, like. 
how how is the destroying of the church being done? Anyway, so here he is conniving with his friends and and then there's an angel in front of him talking to him. And did he fall down? Yeah, and they were so astonished. So they see this the angel of the Lord appeared unto them and he descended as it were in a cloud. So this this bright light in a cloud-like thing comes right down in front of them and he spoke as if it were with a voice of thunder. So you've got thunder rumbling from this person just ahead of you or this cloud or this light <clears throat> to shake upon which they stood, which caused the earth to shake upon which they stood. And so great was their astonishment that they fell to the earth and understood not the words of which he spake unto them. So he's talking to them. He's, this voice of thunder is talking to them, but they don't understand. And nevertheless, he cried again, uh, saying, Alma, arise and stand forth, for why persecutest thou the church of God? For thus, for the Lord hath said, This is my church, and I will establish it, and nothing shall overthrow it, save it be the save it is the transgression of my pe thy pe my people. And again the angel said, Below the Lord hath heard the prayers of his people, and also the prayers of his servants. So he's heard the prayers of the people in the church. And Alma, for he has prayed with much faith concerning thee, that thou mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. What a kind and gentle thing to do. You know, that thou mayest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. He may know the things that Mosiah, that his son is saying about him you know he may he may be saying all kinds of unvirtuous things he's been up to right the father he's he's well aware of this stuff I mean he knows and so but what is he praying about for his son is he disinheriting him and you know, no, he's he's praying with much faith that thou mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. Therefore, for this purpose have I come to convince thee of the power and authority of God, and the prayers of his that the prayers of his servants might be answered according to their faith. You know, when the Lord has to go he goes himself so Jesus Christ came to the earth he sent his son to the earth and who suffered and died for our sins that had to be done and he had to send a person to do that so he sent Jesus Christ now there are other times that he just sends an angel but if he doesn't need to send an angel he'll just send a person so sometimes he'll prompt you to take milk over to that person he doesn't have to send an angel. He doesn't have to send Jesus Christ because you're available. We are we are his hands on the earth to do his work and do the good. So if he can send a person, he will. So he'll send you to to send to do milk. Well, now if if he could have just sent a person to go talk to Alma and the sons of Mosiah, if that would have worked, he would have done that. I'm sure that Alma, his father, spent a lot of time trying to persuade him about righteousness but but what he was doing must have been so big he must have been having such an effect on the church and the membership of the church I mean to have the church praying about this one individual collectively and the father praying for him with great faith you know praying for him with great faith and it, it must have been so big that there was no person that could possibly have helped to remedy the situation and the situation was so grave the salvation of so many people was in jeopardy that it was important enough that he sent an angel so the Lord doesn't always send an angel like if we pray for our children or something, if our children are up to something they shouldn't do, and we pray for them. and But he's not going to send an angel because there are people. And 
maybe by the Holy Spirit. He'll, but we can pray that they will be brought to a knowledge of the truth. Sometimes the kids look at us parents and think that we're so antiquated and living by some old timey standard. And they used to be in the church, they used to say, um, the, the, the new morality is still the same old immorality. <laughs> Shall we carry on? Oh, i am gone past a, an hour. Well, let's see. Um, that thou mayest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. Therefore, for this purpose have I come to convince thee of the power and authority of God, that the prayers of his servants might be answered according to their faith. You know, sometimes in, in the New Testament, during some of the miracles that Jesus performed, he, he said the reason that, to do, that he had done the miracle was so that people would believe on him once they saw the miracle, once they saw the person had, it was, and, and I thought sometimes, <coughs> perhaps, like Regina, your fourth stage breast cancer. Perhaps as the Lord heals you from this, this miracle, the miracle of modern medicine, what it's capable of, this miracle may be only to show the power of God, not just to extend your life or the happiness of those around you, I need you out there supporting me. <clears throat> it's a scary world out there. Sure, there's a lot of traffic on here right now. I guess it's coming. Well, it's 922. Okay, we won't look at that because that's too unnerving can't look at that and think about things. I can do that only, or this. Okay. But it's still moving. Yay. Therefore, for, oh, that's why it slowed down, was because everybody was slowing down to get across that bumpy area. Okay, so that thou mightest be brought to a knowledge of the truth. Therefore, for this purpose have I come to convince thee of the power and authority of God, that the prayers of his servants might be answered according to their faith. That's another thing is, as our faith, he only answers us according to our faith. In fact, there, he has said that he can, there are things that would, he would have done for us, but he could not because of our lack of faith. So perhaps we could walk on water, but we don't need to walk on water. Walking on water is not that um, important to our salvation, or, nor to our life on earth. Okay, and now behold, can ye dispute the power of God? For behold, doth not my voice shake the earth? So, and now behold, can ye dispute the power of God? If a tornado can do so much damage, if a hurricane can do so much damage, if a, an earthquake, a tsunami, if all these things can do so much damage, and even just looking at the waves and trying to surf on the waves, and the waves are so powerful, and the floods, the river, the water moving is so powerful, and gravity bringing rocks down a mountainside or trees or mud or whatever. It's all so powerful. And the Lord is more powerful than all of them put together. I mean, he can command them. He can command the tornado to move. Sometimes I've seen things like that where I believe that certain parts of, like I think that Florida, the Tampa area, I. 
it was going to hit Tampa, that storm. Ian, was it? And, and it didn't. It swung instead up north of that. And I wonder if it was because of the prayers of the people in Tampa. I don't think that they were necessarily better than the people north of it. But maybe there was a more concerted prayer effort, which kind of sent out a bit of a force shield, you know. That mm. Well, there was a bigger city, so more people prayed about it than in, than in the line of tiny village. The tiny village got it. I'm just kidding. It's just, it's just what I heard. But there is something to that. There is the, um, of course, these tornadoes and all this stuff is going to happen on the earth because of the... The new climate but or the shifting to climate but um, it's <gasps> oh. but it's not punishment for the places that are hit we all need challenges in our lives and life goes along pretty smoothly a lot of the time sometimes People that can handle it, they get more challenges than people that can't handle it. That's true. But also, there was a study done. I've talked about this before. There was a study done where um, some there were two people or two groups of people that had this same illness. All these people, one group of people had a, had an illness and had, had the same turnout, you know, the same, not turnout, but the same, um, the, the people were, were pretty much medically equal. And so they had people pray for half of the members of this study and nobody prayed for the other half. And they were just random half of the study, random people, but the prayers, the praying people, prayed for the names individually or however it was done for these people <coughs> in a certain part of the study, and they got better faster. They were, everything about their recovery was better. So to me, that's pretty cool. That's like the first the first study I have ever in my life seen that shows the power of prayer. I mean, there's spiritually we know the power of prayer, but you can't really duplicate like I prayed that it wouldn't rain and it didn't. Or there's a lot of things that were hard to duplicate, but to actually do a study where you're praying for somebody and to find out that praying for someone who is prayed for they didn't know they were being prayed for. And yet they had the better recovery. So the Lord listens to our prayers. And they are of, are of he's over there. Yeah. They are of efficacy. Okay, let's see now what have we got here. Um and now behold, can ye dispute the power of God? For behold, doth not my voice shake the earth? And can ye not also behold me before you? And I am sent from God. Yeah, just seeing an angel is proof. Now I say unto thee, go, and remember the captivity of thy fathers in the land of Helam and in the land of Nephi, and remember how great things he has done for them. For they were in bondage, and he has delivered them. And now I say unto thee, Alma, go thy way, and seek to destroy the church no more, that their prayers may be answered. And this, even if thou wilt of thyself, be cast off. That doesn't make sense, the way that is written. And this, even if thou wilt of thyself, be cast off. Oh, maybe even, and this, even if you want to be cast off, stop. Ah, yes, even thou, if thou wilt of thyself, be, even if you're trying to be cast off. Now it came to pass that these were the last words which the angel spake unto Alma, and he departed. And now Alma and those that were with him fell again to the earth, so they must have gotten up. For great was their astonishment, for they were 
for with their own eyes they had beheld an angel of the Lord, and his voice was as thunder which shook the earth, and they knew that there was nothing save the power of God that could shake the earth and cause it to tremble as though it would part asunder. And now the astonishment of Alma was so great that he became dumb that he could not open his mouth. Yea, and he became weak, even that he could not move his hands. Therefore he was taken by those that were with him, and carried helpless even until he was laid before his father. And they rehearsed unto his father all that had happened unto them. And his father rejoiced, for he knew that it was the power of God. And he caused that a multitude should be gathered together, that they might witness what the Lord had done for his son and also for those that were with them. So now, like this is proof positive, call in the media. Let's let everybody know this. Everybody's been saying horrible things about me and about the gospel and about everybody in the whatever. Well, let's now notice here the power of God. And he caused the priests, of course, they didn't have media back then like we do now. I don't know. Maybe they did. Not like whatever. Because a multitude should be gathered together that they might witness that the Lord, what the Lord had done for his son and also for those that were with him. And he caused that the priests should assemble themselves together and they began to fast and pray that their Lord their God, to the Lord their God, that he would open the mouth of Alma, that he might speak, and also that his limbs might receive their strength and that the eyes of the people might be open to see and know of the goodness and glory of God. And it came to pass that after they had fasted and prayed for the space of two days and two nights, so this whole multitude is gathered and they're waiting two days and two nights, the limbs of Alma received their strength. <clears throat> and he stood up and began to speak unto them, bidding them to be of good comfort. For, said he, I have repented of my sins and have been redeemed of the Lord. Behold, I am born of the Spirit. Let that sink in for a moment. For he said, I have repented of my sins and have been redeemed of the Lord. Behold, I am born of the Spirit. And the Lord said unto me, Marvel not that all mankind, yea, men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people must be born again, yea, born of God, changed from a carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. And thus they become new creatures. And unless they do this, they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. I say unto you, unless this be the case, they must be cast off. And this I know, because I was like to be cast off. That's what that meant, those last three words. And this, if thou wilt of thyself be cast off. Let me see what it said. Now I say unto the Alma, Go thy way, and seek to destroy the church no more, that their prayers may be answered, and this, even if thou wilt of thyself be cast off. Now it makes sense. So even if you want to do this and be all evil, stop so the prayers of your fathers, that their prayers may be answered. I kind of interpret this as uh, even if thou wilt of thyself be cast off, so even if you even if you want to ruin your own chances of eternal life, don't try and mess it up for others, for the church. You're right. So that's another way of thinking about it. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. I didn't say it in the same words, but that was it. Um. Okay, so this is what being born again is. 
For he said, For, said he, I have repented of my sins and have been redeemed of the Lord. So, you know, accepting the forgiveness from the Lord and the redemption because of having a broken and contrite spirit, being humble, repenting. Because I have repented of my sins and have been redeemed of the Lord, behold, I am born of the Spirit. And the Lord said unto me, Marvel that all mankind, yea, men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and peoples, must be born again, yea, born of God, changed from their carnal and fallen state. So that's our normal way, right, is our carnal and fallen state, where everything is totally left brain. Everything is totally the physical world carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness being redeemed of God becoming his sons and daughters to a state of righteousness being redeemed of God becoming his sons and daughters I know that in the moment when I'm repenting when I have repented and feel forgiven, I am, I am pure at that time. I am completely clean when I have completely repented. I am as pure as I can be at that moment. And that is the redemption. The, um, Yea, born of God, changed from their carnal and fallen state. So this is a thing that can be repeated over and over. Born of God, changed from their carnal state and fallen state to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. And thus they become new creatures. Well, I guess there's sort of a baseline where you cross this threshold and you are embarking on the journey, the being born of God. You have... It has come to your knowledge that there is a spiritual realm and that spiritual things have importance. And so you begin the process of becoming like him. Um, and um, thus they become new creatures. And unless they do this, they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. And I say unto you, unless this be the case, they must be cast off. And this I know because I was like to be cast off. So we're taking the 400? Yes, uh, no. For uh, 407. Yeah, we're, it's only 930. We're doing good. Okay. didn't get this when you said that all these things you've said Regina it's your second round truth I'm still listening I'll go to heaven Jesus is embedded in my heart so deep interesting when I was little I was baptized and felt Christ in my heart and he's never left me and he never did and he never left me and I never left him that's very cool I came to know that there was a God when I was a teenager. And I came to know that Jesus was the Christ when I was 20, I think. Anyway, and so my life since that time has basically been based on that. But not in as much sometimes greater than others you know sometimes I lose sight of what's important and I go on in my own way and I mean I, I always pray that I won't hit a deer or that something to that effect and today I realize that when I'm driving I also have the Holy Spirit with me and the Holy Spirit will prompt me of danger and difficulty and so I am not completely on my own about this, you know, like I can pray for it and then hope, hope, you know, but no, I can listen and he will prompt me and I'll know if there is a danger up ahead.
you know you've got those feelings sometimes when you know that you've got to be ready to stop but that's before anything happens that would clue you in like that so I guess we've been talking for a long time but I like reading this um I say unto you, unless this be the case, they must be cast off. And this I know, because I was like to be cast off. Nevertheless, after waiting through much tribulation. So these are in the two days and two nights while he was limp. He waited through much tribulation, repenting nigh unto death. The Lord in mercy hath seen fit to snatch me out of an everlasting burning, and I am born of God. You see? that everlasting burning that he was feeling once he saw how light the light was and how dark the darkness was in him it was like an unquenchable fire but he knew the words of his father he knew to repent and he had just been told by the lord to repent the angel to repent and he knew what repentance was and so as he realized how dark he was and what he was really in danger the way he was heading and he realized where he was at spiritually because I think that our where we're at spiritually stays with us on the other side right we don't become more spiritual than we are here maybe we do don't become a different person. No, we, we progress. We, we continue to progress, that's right. But we are the same person that we always were. If we're spiritual here, we're spiritual there. If we're really not spiritual, then we're not as much inclined spiritually that way on the other side either. Right, that's how we are. So. This life is the time. Okay. So nevertheless, after waiting through much tribulation, repenting nigh unto death, the Lord in mercy hath seen fit to snatch me out of an everlasting burning, and I am born of God. My soul hath been redeemed from the gall of bitterness and bonds of iniquity. I was in the darkest abyss, but now I behold the marvelous light of God. My soul was racked with eternal torment, but I am snatched, and my soul is pain no more. I rejected my Redeemer and denied that which had been spoken of by our fathers. But now that they may foresee, but now that they may foresee that he will come and that he remembereth every creature of his creating, he will make himself manifest unto all. Yea, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess before him. Yea, even at the last day when all men shall be judged shall stand to be judged of him, then shall they confess that he is God. Then shall they confess who live without God in the world, that the judgment of an everlasting punishment is just upon them. And they shall quake and tremble and shrink beneath the glance of his all-searching eye. And now it came to pass that Alma began from this tide forward to teach the people and those who were with Alma at the time the angel appeared unto them, traveling round about through all the land, publishing to all the people the things which so publishing, so they did have some form of media. It came to pass that Alma began from this time forward to teach the people, and those who were with Alma at the time the angel appeared unto them, traveling round about through all the land, publishing to all the people the things which they had heard and seen, and preaching the word of God in much tribulation, being greatly persecuted by those who were unbelievers, being smitten by many of them. But notwithstanding all this, they did impart much consolation to the church, confirming their faith and exhorting them with long suffering and much travail to keep the commandments of God. And four of them were the sons of Mosiah, and their names were Ammon and Aaron and Omner and Himni. And these were the names of the sons of Mosiah. And they traveled throughout all the land of Zarahemla and among all the people who were under the reign of King Mosiah. 
zealously striving to repair all the injuries which they had done to the church, confessing all their sins and publishing all the things which they had seen, and explaining the prophecies and the scriptures to all who desired to hear them. And they were thus instruments in the hand of God in bringing many to the knowledge of the truth, yea, to the knowledge of their Redeemer. And how blessed are they, for they did publish peace. They did publish good tidings of good, and they did declare unto the people that the Lord reigneth. <sighs> well, on that note, I think I'm going to say good night or say goodbye. We're in Toronto on Airport Road, and the temple is near the airport. So I'm so glad I was able to do this today. I'm trying every single morning for the rest of my life. I'm trying, this is my goal, is to make a video, wake up early, make a video about as I study the scriptures. So I'm teaching it. I used to teach Sunday school, you know, and I taught Relief Society. So I'm teaching this and that keeps me focused. And when I teach, I learn more. If I were just reading it to myself, <clears throat> but because I'm teaching as I'm reading, it's really good for me. And I really need to do this. I need to stop my procrastinating, my scripture studying. I'm 67. At what point in my life am I going to start? But not only that, there is a lot that I can learn in the scriptures. And I love learning. I love learning spiritual things. And so I'm depriving myself of having cool things to learn. But one of my big stumbling blocks has always been not just what time, but what place in the scriptures do I study? And so the topical guide has been my go-to, and I have used it when I've studied the scriptures to find things. <sighs> anyway, and so that's what I'm doing again. I, we, the prophet, President Nelson, told us that we should study all the references of Jesus Christ in the scriptures. We should read the Book of Mormon and underline all of the references of Jesus Christ. But I think he said also, but I'm not quite sure, that we should use a topical guide and look up every reference in the entire scriptures about Jesus Christ. And so I am doing that. There's all these Jesus Christ appearances, Jesus Christ, and they go on and on. There must be a hundred of them. Maybe not quite, maybe so, maybe more. Anyway, so we're on Jesus Christ, head of the church. And so every time he talks about my church, as he is the head of it, is my church, his church. And so this, we got distracted into Alma, who was, uh, he was the chief judge and, uh, and, and the Lord told him what the rules are for judging the way it should be done in his church and throughout the land. And so, because it was his church, that's why we got into reading about that. Then, once we were in Alma, I mean, we were right there at the the son Alma, the son of Alma, Alma the Younger. That's what he's called. There's the four sons of Mosiah and the Alma, Alma the Younger, and the four sons of King Mosiah, or the sons of Mosiah. Yeah, it's Alma the Younger and the sons of Mosiah had gone about doing all that bad stuff to the church and then the angel came and then they all turned around and seeing an angel must be a very powerful experience I can't imagine I have felt the presence not necessarily the presence of an angel maybe so in the temple yes I guess so yes I felt the I felt the glory of God. I witnessed the glory of God in the temple. And I felt the presence of those who have passed on for whom we do the work. But also, Okay, so anyway, 
you can do this at home. I'm glad that I was able to, on this day that we're going to the temple, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this today, but the internet has worked. And this is a good way to use my data. <sighs> anyway, okay, well, I'll talk to you guys later. Tomorrow, same time, same place. It'll be seven to eight, hopefully, unless we, we may be going to the temple again to tomorrow. So I may do it again this way tomorrow. Okay, so talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Let me talk to you this afternoon, this evening, after we go to the temple. I guess we'll be on our way home sometime this afternoon. <laughs>